Hey guys, and welcome back to the Ginger Realtor Show. It is Monday morning, which can only mean one thing. Yep, it's Mortgage Monday. So we're back after our international hiatus. We have Mike Longman from the Mortgage Firm with us. Mike, thanks for joining us. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Guys, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get this vital information uh, right to your desktops the second it gets released. All right, Mike, so let's let's kick in. Um, been away for, for a week or so between illness and, and my national trip. Um, it feels like a little bit of a different market I've come back to. It seems to be hotting up. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's funny. I uh, I posted yesterday on a couple of social media things, and I'm not a big social media person, but I I just wrote, "Did you feel that that was the market changing uh, or market shifting?" And I got a bunch of comments. I got a bunch of personal like DMs or whatever, whatever you call them, um, asking me to explain what I'm talking about. I mean, rates have dipped. I mean, we were we were in the eights, right? A couple months ago, we were in the low eights, and everybody, you know, everybody was quoting the high sevens because nobody wanted to say the the dirty word eight, you know. Um, but now we're 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 realistically in the sixes. The fives are reachable, um, you know. With it, whether you pay a little bit here or do a buy down, whatever, whatever it is, the fives are reachable with a, with a good scenario. Um, some of the builders are really starting to you know, ramp up in the fours, you know, and it's, it's just, it's exciting because we're, we're making movement and we're gaining momentum and it's simple. It's just a confidence level. And I've always said that 25 years in this business, I mean, all it takes is one person on the block to buy a new car and then everybody's buying a new car, you know, or one person on the block. It's like to keep it up with the Joneses. Yeah. You know, I have, I think 11 or 12 offers out right now with, with my, with my uh, clients. It just in the last couple of days, and I think we have five new contracts that came in in the last couple of days. It's just, it's changing. I walk into the real estate offices. You can see people are walking around a little bit more umfa, you know, they have a little bit more, uh, you know, clout when they walk where and you talk to mortgage people and everybody's a little bit happier, you know, they're talking about, you know, they're already talking about the, you know, getting paid and, you know, we've been slow for a year you know, eight months to a year. Now, all of a sudden people are like, oh, we're coming into a spring market. I mean, it's a perfect storm, right? It's, it's a spring market. So the people up north, I mean, I know in Florida, we don't have too much of a spring market, I guess. But, you know, Jersey, people like you and I, where we grew up, I mean, it's 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 the middle of February. So the spring market is right around the corner. Plus rates are dipping a little bit. Um, you know, we're still dealing with the election thing that's got to go on. And we're at, that's going to be a nightmare, I'm sure, for the next few months. But I just think it's going to, if rates stay stable, they don't have to go down anymore. I mean, if they want to stay in the mid sixes, that's fine. That's a great place to be. We just, when we eliminate the fear of the unknown, people settle down. And when people settle down, they want to move. We just want to move. Everybody wants to. No, you know, and, and, and I agree with next, you. I think that's the biggest what, thing. What we saw last year was a lot of pay, a lot of homeowners, especially kind of sitting tight on the, on what they've got, not wanting to kind of rock the boat, not wanting to go out and spend um, extra money with regards to purely just interest mm -hmm. um, on a house, even if they needed to make that move. So you've got a lot of people just kind of sitting there waiting for the kind of, uh, almost like the beginning, the start is going for people to go out and start that race to find a new home. Um, yep. I know from my inbox and, my, and the calls that I'm receiving that, there's a lot more, there are a lot more people wanting to go out and view properties. There are a lot more people looking to put offers in uh, and maybe start negotiating. Because if you're looking at a house that's 360 but needs some work, then you can probably get it for 340, still mm -hmm. get some concessions from the seller, and you're 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 ending up quids in, you're picking up a house with instant equity. And so it's there's a there's a lot out there for people who are ready to make the move. And I was in a bar the other night and Across the bar, someone yelled uh, to someone, should I buy a house now or wait six to nine months? And the guy on the other side of the bar who turned out was a realtor said, wait. And I'm like, are you effing kidding me? Like you wait six to nine months and you're looking at paying 5% more on the value of the house at least. It's dangerous, dangerous thing to say. Yeah, it's a dangerous looking thing at to potential, say. The potential of bidding wars and going over asking and waiving inspection and and no contingency on the mortgage or the appraisal contingency gone. And like when I sat down into it with her, I said, look, I said, this is what you're risking. She's like, oh, can I have your card? She's yeah. like, I if I'd known all that, she said, so so now we're working with this girl. She's a nurse, she's got fantastic credit. She doesn't want anything huge. 
and she wants to be out in Plant City. So that's going to be a really nice one to work with. But it's just the lack of, from my perspective, when you look at a realtor who's who's saying that kind of thing and is saying, you know what, hold off, hold off, hold off. And you've got to really question, are they the right person to be working with? They don't want to work. No. And look, every realtor says now is the perfect time to buy because it is. There are only two good times to buy, five years ago and today. And you can't buy five years ago unless you have a DeLorean. So stop waiting. I mean, again, it doesn't matter how many times you say it to people and they'll, they'll come up, oh, I just want a little bit more savings behind me. I just want a little bit more savings behind me. Oh, but you know what? Let me get past the, let me get past the spring and into the summer and then we'll start looking. And I'm like, it's going to cost you. Yeah, it's dangerous. So the people that are saying right now, you know, hold off, hold off, hold off. And there might have been a time where, you know, if somebody said that six months ago, you know, now's a much better time, right? But I mean, if you hold off another six months at the pace we're going right now, you're going to create a very diff a difficult environment for the buyer, um, the buyer, the mortgage person, everybody. It's going to be a, it's going to be a million times harder because, like you said, you got um, you know the, the appraisal waivers, the, the going high on houses. I mean, I'm 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 seeing bidding wars right now. I'm in one right now. I'm a small little condo here in Apollo Beach. You know, I uh, you know, I have. The buyers, I have the two sets of buyers, two different realtors bidding on the same condo. You know, obviously they don't know any of that, but it's uh, going back and forth. And but it's know, that it's age old adage of, of fixing the leaky roof. Like, yeah, okay, when it's one drip, it's easy to it's easy just to hold off and yeah, look, I can put something under. That's your eight percent. Then when that drip starts kind of becoming like quicker, there's just seven percent. And by the time we hit six and five percent, that drip become a hole and it's a deluge. And it's like your cup or your bucket's not going to hold in. And it's just the same with the real estate market. You're not going to be able to compete against everybody who's been waiting for what's effectively going to be nearly 18 months because mm -hmm. there's so many people held off last year and, and, and what people are ready for this year. On top of that, you've got the new people coming in the market as first-time home buyers who never knew any of this. And it's like you've really got to question why you would wait till later in there unless you're tied into a lease and the penalties are so strict that and severe that you can't afford it but yeah. if you've got money behind you um if you've got the credit availability and you can qualify for a mortgage now buy now yep yep i mean there's no guarantee you're gonna like everybody says buy now you're gonna refinance later there's no guarantee that's gonna happen because we don't know what the rates are gonna do rates are historically good right now yeah, if you can yeah, I mean, position yourself. I mean, if you look at it from the the, the the complaint I have about modern media and modern mankind is that we're so short sighted, we don't look far enough back to appreciate what we've got. Yes. So when you look at the fact that like rates at the moment are six percent, and everyone's like, oh, they were three percent just two years ago, though. And it's like, yeah, but but 20 years ago they were 17 percent or yeah. 30 years ago, or whatever it was. And it's like You've got to understand that that single digit interest rates in mortgage is the exception as opposed to the rule. Like, yeah, we've had some good years, and, and I know that that for the majority of the time that I've been in, in real estate, they've been under eight percent. So it it but on the long-term picture of things, you've got to realize that this isn't what normally happens. Yeah. I'm in the middle of opening another business and uh it requires an SBA loan and the interest rate is double digits on an SBA loan right now. And uh, it is what it is. It's just, it is what it is. You know, I mean, it, doesn't, I mean, it is. Uh, and again, so, so let, let's pivot away from the rate side of things because by the time we, by the time somebody's watching this, maybe a couple of weeks from now, rates could have skyrocketed or plummeted. So it wouldn't be like that. This mid sixes isn't relevant. Yeah. Um, how are we looking on on for, for those people who are ready to buy and maybe would like some assistance through grants and things like that? What what are we looking at right now? Are we looking at the return of our hometown heroes, maybe? Are we looking at some other things that you're pushing? Well, every couple of weeks, hometown heroes pops open with a couple million bucks, you know, stuff fall, fall through money. Um, it doesn't last very long. Um, it's like every two weeks at 10 o'clock on Mondays, they announce how much is in the kitty. Like this past week, it was like 1.8 million. It literally lasts about an hour because um, there's people just waiting in the wings. Mortgage people are ready to pounce on and reserve that money. Florida bond doesn't run out of money. It's still there. That's that's fantastic. Um, now remind us about Florida bond. What's that? Remind us about the Florida bond. 
So Florida Bond is it's very similar to Hometown Heroes. It's like they don't give you a percentage of the loan amount. They just give you a flat ten thousand dollars. So in some cases, if you're buying, you know, if you're buying a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, you get more money with Florida Bond than you would with Hometown Heroes. But if you're buying a four hundred thousand dollar house, you're getting more with Hometown Heroes than Florida Bond. But nonetheless, you're getting ten thousand dollars to go towards closing costs or down payment. Okay, and your credit rating needs to be where to qualify Six, for that. Six forty. So 640 or above and you can qualify. Is there, are there any uh, earning restrictions as to who can't qualify? Is there yeah, it's, much? it runs all, it's like 130,000, 500 bucks. Is that for an individual? Yeah, and you could split it up. So you don't, like if it's, if the husband makes 120 and the wife makes 80 and you just put it in the husband's name, you don't have to have the spouse on that. Okay, so as long as that, as long as the earnings. Both qualify, yeah. Okay, so that's good. And then there's other stuff. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, we have a program called the DPR tool, which is pretty interesting. I think it's a subscription from Freddie Mac or something. I don't, I don't know where we get it, but nonetheless, we get it. So it's a it's a website that we get. You log in, and if you if it's your client, I run their credit. I'll say, all right, look, looking for down payment assistance in Hillsborough County, and they'll say, all right, there's 39 programs available. Is your credit a first? Is your borrower a first time home buyer? Yes. Okay. There's still 39 available. Is your borrower's credit score above a 680? No. All right. And then it eliminates the other ones. Nice. There's only 22 left. So by the time you get done with all your questions, you end up with one, two, or three DPA programs. And it, it steers you in the right direction. So you're not digging through guidelines because it's virtually impossible to know what all these down payment assistance programs do. You know, um, so it's, it's a great, great tool. I love the Florida Bond just like hometown heroes they're just easy there's nothing there's no additives to the loan to make it harder to qualify for like you know you don't go through second third rounds of appraisals and underwriting it's just we could close a florida bond program in 15 days so a florida bond program as long as the buyer is okay moving forward so they do the inspection everything is copacetic there the appraisal comes in everything's copacetic there the florida bond's okay it's not like some of it's not like they they want to qualify you like oh is there any like a, a VA or, or or an FHA kind of appraisal type thing on top of that? Yeah, what you do is you're just doing whatever your loan product is, whether you're doing a VA, FHA, Fannie, Freddie, conventional. Um, you just do your regular underwriting process, and then the underwriter just makes sure that it meets the, the Florida bond specifics, and, and you're good. I mean, we're closing loans right now in about twelve days. Oh. Bless you. Um, regular loans, we're closing twelve days. I mean, okay, guys. Probably, yeah. well, Mike is a wealth of information as always. Mike, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, we are going to go more in depth on the next one. Uh, we've, we've got a couple of things that we're thinking about doing, and we'll start talking about those in more depth. But, Mike, thank you very much for joining us this week. And two days from now is Valentine's Day, so everybody treat your loved ones well. Buy them a house and finance them. Buy them, buy them, buy them, oh, there, you go, there you go. I was going to say flowers or candy, but a house is fine. Nothing says you. I love you like, quite like a three bed, two bath split level home. That's true. I agree with you there. All right, guys. So if you want to buy a house, a loved love one, a house, give me a call. We'll help you buy it. Mike will help you finance it, and everyone is happy. Guys, that's all we have time for on the Ginger Real Show this week. Um, we'll be back with Mortgage Mondays with Kim next week. Uh, for now, Mike, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you.